Hey y'all, it's Logan. Welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited about this one. I'm going to be distilling peppermint for the first time. So I grabbed my shears and started going to town on this peppermint. So the method I'm using is hydro distillation. In order to do that, I needed to get a pressure cooker, but I needed to modify it just a little bit. So I took the natural steam vent it has on top off and put my own copper threaded nipple that I got from Lowe's in it instead. But I had to drill out a hole in the top of the lid for that. And my 3 8 drive was not big enough for it. So I kind of ended up having to jackhammer it and eyeballing it until it fit. And you can see that it fits perfectly right there. Yes, that's me recording in the reflection of the lid. Hello. Anyway, I put a washer on top, put the copper nipple in, thread side down, and found a copper hex nut that would thread onto it, and then I just ended up tightening it all down. Now in order to cool that steam that's coming from that pressure cooker, which has the vaporized oil, I needed to make my own condenser. So I just ended up using copper tubing and a Lowe's bucket, and I drilled out a little hole at the bottom right here, and then just sealed it off with some silicone gel. I also ended up putting some silicone gel on the washer at the top of the lid. Now I was ready to start distilling my peppermint. I threw it all in the pressure cooker and filled it up with just enough water to where the leaves are barely floating in there. So the steam is going to carry up the vent into the vinyl tube, which is behind my microwave door, into the condenser, which is going to cool it back down into a liquid, which then I will collect. In order for the steam and the condenser to cool back down into a liquid, I just threw some ice inside of the Lowe's bucket. Look at that baby go. You can see it pushing the steam all the way up through that tube into the condenser. And not long after the water started boiling, I started getting my first droplets of distilled peppermint oil. And it smells so good. You can see just how hot that copper coil is getting. You can see the steam coming off of it right there. And yes, I did touch it like an idiot just to see how hot it was. It was very hot. I did have to end up cycling out old water and just throwing in new ice into the bucket. And I was kind of worried that the top of the coil coming out of the bucket right there wasn't being cooled enough. So I just ended up ladling ice cold water on it the entire time. So you can see it's starting to drip really slowly, meaning it's probably coming to an end. The boiling water is not boiling as violently. The pot's not as heavy. So it's pretty much done. There's the leftover boiled peppermint. Boiled to absolute death, but it did its job. So let's send it a good farewell. Afterwards, I poured what I got into a mason jar and then let it sit for a little bit. And as you can see right here, there's a thin oil layer right at the top. I whipped up my super premium, super ultra, super awesome oil separator, which I got off Amazon, and then I poured all of the liquid into it. I know it's hard to see, but there is a thin oil layer right there on top. I tried zooming in and getting a good shot of it the best I could, but it's there. I let the oil separator do its job and as it's coming down closer to the bottom you can more easily see that peppermint oil layer and it's just a matter of shutting that valve off right before the oil. And boom, just like that, you got peppermint oil. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, consider subscribing, and thank you so much for watching.